What's going on growers? James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. This is what we've been waiting for. Summer is finally here and so are the harvests. So today I want to share with you my uncommon approach to gardening and show you how it's securing me and Tuck bigger harvests. Let's go! <laughs> Now is one of my favorite times of year in the garden because there are so many different fruits and veggies that are available to eat and snack on. Because spring is ending now, a lot of the spring stuff is finishing, but some of the stuff is still ready to eat, like these strawberries here. We've been eating these strawberries since like late May. There's so many and we're trying to keep up on them, but they're so fresh and so good. A little dirty, but still delicious. Snack on one of those. Mm. So sweet. That spring harvest is finishing up, but that means the summer harvests are starting too. So let me bring you right in front of me here. We've got a zucchini. And that's the excellent thing at this time of the year. We're getting those summer things, like the early just to start. Me and Tuck love these zucchini. And we're also getting that spring stuff. And that's why diversity is so important in a garden. It adds stability to your harvest and it makes things even more fun. You'll notice how young I'm taking the zucchini. I mentioned in a previous video, when it comes to zucchinis and some of your other uh, veggies and fruits like cucumbers, you wanna harvest them early and often so you continue to get more and more. This is my favorite variety right here. So good, let me just crack into it and have a fresh bite. Even good raw, especially when they're young. Mm, so good, Tuck probably wants them too. Zucchinis are one of my favorite squash in the garden. And in the past, I've had some issues with things like powdery mildew, but I haven't had any issue yet this year. And some of that is because of the variety. So when it comes to zucchinis and a lot of your other things, I've mentioned it so many times, but variety selection is huge. This is my favorite one, the Costata Romanesco. The flavor is amazing. It's got like this nutty kind of flavor to it. So good. And just, I just love everything about it. So Tuck's gonna continue snacking on that. And I'm gonna bring you around to some other things we have to harvest. While Tuck is finishing that zucchini, I just wanted to show you something. I'll bring you in close. When it comes to zucchini and other squash, there's male and female flowers. So your male flowers are gonna be this flower. This you'll notice right here. It doesn't have uh, any anything at the base of it. Well, your female flowers are gonna have that zucchini at the base or whatever squash it is. So the male flowers right here and the females right there. And you could hand pollinate these if you want. I've done it before. I can show you a little clip of it in the future or I'll give you a video of it if you want. But let me bring you to some of the other stuff, some of the cabbage and some other stuff we have ready. These sunflowers next to the zucchinis are starting to get massive too. And that's a big theme in the garden. What I want to talk about, you'll notice there's so much diversity within the garden and that's what adds a huge level of stability. So Bill Mollison talks about this, how there's diversity and stability, but it's not just an overall diversity. You don't want to just throw random things together. There has to be a level of design. He says it's not just about diversity. It's about how many beneficial connections we can have within one another. That's why companion planting is so huge. That's why you'll notice different things that I have all planted together. Some things like aromatics mixed, mixed in with my brassicas. But let's grab one of these uh, brassicas right here. This cabbage looks like it's about ready. A nice fat head on it. So we're just gonna harvest this one. And this is a nice early cabbage because I have some that haven't even started heading up. So again, different variety selection. And a diverse number of things is gonna give you stability in your harvest make it more fun because you're eating all different stuff. Look at that. It's a small one, but just wait till I show you some of the bigger ones on the side. We're gonna have some massive, massive heads this year. Bigger than we've ever had before. Let me show you some of these beans right next to me too. And look at these. These are the dragon tongues. Just starting to flower, just starting to set up. And then Tuck's sitting in the beets. Tuck, you can't sit here, boy. This guy, <laughs> you can't sit here, boy. But he's sitting in the beets. Look at those beets. I'll grab a couple. But you can see how we have these beets planted so close in little packs of three. So in one section, there's two nice beets. And I've got uh, whole rows of that. So, so many beets to harvest too. Again, going back to that whole the idea of diversity makes it more fun to harvest. Now let's just go behind me here and check out some of these beans. Here's the purple dove bush beans. Such a pretty bean and you can see they're starting to get larger. So this is that same scenario. We're gonna want to pick these early and often because there's gonna be a lot of them soon. And I've got purple dove and then dragon tongue and then purple dove, so the mixture of the two. Tuck's walking through here trying to get in the middle of every shot. Come on, Tuck, get out of there, boy. He's trying to cool off too, I think, a little bit. But let's grab him some carrots. I've got some carrots that I need to harvest in the other food forest that I'll show you, but this is the next round of carrots. We like to plant carrots on a staggered every couple weeks. Every two to three weeks, two to three weeks, once you start carrots, you can basically plant them. And you'll notice we have the next round of lettuce too. So we'll be harvesting lettuce today, but we're always looking towards the future, always making sure that we're focused on the next harvest, the next thing coming up. We'll let Tuck do his own job. Go ahead, boy. We'll let Tuck actually harvest his own carrot for this one. Go on, boy. He's having a tough time pulling it out. 
There he goes. You can see he, he, he loves harvesting his own food, but sometimes he can be just a bit reckless. I'll really enjoy these ones. This is the purple cosmic carrot. It's got really nice color to it, and it's got a decent flavor too. You can see it's got like that purple outside, but then it's almost like an orange kind of in the middle. And even the, the stalks have like this beautiful color too, and some of the leaves have this like purple hinting. And Tux loves these ones so much. But you'll notice just right above Tuck's head as he's eating that, all these grapes that we have planted along the fence line. So we always try to use all, utilize all the space to make sure we're getting the most out of our harvests. So yeah, we've got all that stuff growing down here, but we've got some cucumbers that are just starting to get tall, trellis along the fence. We've also got grapes. So just to give you a peek of some of the grapes here, here in that corner, we've got more grapes behind me here. This is the most prolific grapevine that we have this year in this small garden. And something that should be encouraging to all of you is uh, I put this garden in like three or four years ago, not long ago. So these grapes are just loaded. And even the old food forest has so many, so many grapes in it. Continuing cucumbers along there. And look at this. This uh, tomato trellis system is working really nice. Tomatoes are looking the best they ever have. And it all goes back to that same thing. This food forest theme, this idea of blending together perennials, annuals, fruits, vegetables. You wanna make it a garden that you can come out and enjoy, a garden that encourages you to be out here, a garden that actually you wanna eat all the fruit from. So people ask me, James, what do I grow? It's always pretty simple, grow what you wanna eat. Grow things that encourage you to get out here. This year I've planted more veggies than I ever have and more fruits too, but there's also so many flowers, like this calendula right here. It's a great companion. Look, we've got the white calendula with some of the yellow ones and just the unique varieties. So amazing to see. And again, that, that same thing of a lot of new lettuces and different ages. This way we're always getting harvests. More purple dove bush beans. Let me show you some of the delicious fruits we're eating right now though. And that goes back to kind of like how we're getting this, this double harvest in the shoulder season. The black cap raspberries have started. So you've got to make sure you're growing all different kinds of raspberries. So I'll show you. Right now we're eating black cap raspberries, red raspberries, and yellow raspberries. Blueberries, strawberries. So mm. if you time things right, you could be eating so many fruits all, almost all year round. Let me bring you over to some of the blueberries. These blueberries we just put in a couple years ago. And this is that food forest theme, how we've got the uh, perennials as the foundation things. You can see all the blueberries on this. We'll be snacking on all these. And it's fun when you can take like, I'll take some of the blueberries, strawberries, and all the different kinds of raspberries and just eat them all at once, just because I can, and it's fun too. And look at all these back here. And then right underneath it, right underneath the blueberries is just more strawberries. And then right next to here, we've got, you know, this, uh, more annuals growing in this line here. And then behind us, more blueberries. And this is that fun one when I said I mixed the, uh, the pink lemonade with the other blueberry. So it's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be like, it's almost gonna look like a grafted blueberry plant. Um, this year you'll be able to see it. But it's the same thing as I said before. That blueberry plant, that's an early one. Then we have mid-season ones and late-season ones. So we're not only extending the harvest of all the fruit by growing a diverse number of things, but we're extending the harvest by growing a diverse number of varieties too. In this front corner section of the garden, we've got some peach trees, still young trees, growing really nicely, but no fruit yet. And along here, we've got many different things planted, a bunch of brassicas, lettuces, all different kinds of stuff. Some of these cauliflowers and these cabbages that look like they're gonna be massive. I mean, just by the size of, of some of the leaves. And I mentioned in the previous video, one of the sprays that we're using, and you guys can get that if you just check the last video. Then underneath here, I also mentioned earlier that we've got some aromatic herbs mixed in with our brassicas, this rosemary under here. So it's kind of getting shaded out a little bit, but it's just gonna probably sit and wait and just hang out and chill in the shade a little bit. And then once these are taken out, it'll really get big and just take over that section. As we move down here, we've got some big broccolis too. I can't wait for that to start heading up. When you're growing cabbages and stuff and broccolis, you really need to make sure that you're giving them a good amount of water especially when they start uh, setting their heads and a nice uh, lettuce head right here. But I wanna take you into the old food forest where we're, gonna, where we're getting a bunch of different stuff and, and show you what that looks like. In the old food forest now, and the first thing I wanna show you is something I'm just so excited about, and it's the hazelnuts. There are so many hazelnuts on it this year, and I think this is the year where we're just going to get buckets and the chipmunks and stuff are not going to be able to keep up with it. This hazelnut, got pollinated a lot better than the other one. And I think the other one is really helping to pollinate this one because they're wind pollinated, but still so much fruit on it and it's and it, very exciting to see. If we look down here, once we lift up this, you could just see the, the number of hazelnuts. And this wraps around a bunch of sections of the trees. So I, I can't wait for them to just start falling naturally to the ground. And 
even underneath me we've got a, a bunch of echinaceas and flowers and stuff all just coming up through the years and this is a great companion i've talked about it a number of times about the persimmon look at the size of this persimmon this is a nikita's gift a stringent persimmon so this is the fruit that we're going to be harvesting in november i've talked about it before but think about that harvesting fruit all, all the way from like early may to november that's what diversity brings you that's why it's so important. That's why it's this uncommon approach to gardening that is so valuable. This idea of just planting so many different kinds of things. Don't just grow cucumbers and just tomatoes. That's all you have then. There's not as much uh, stability if you're just growing two things. So we've got some nice pears, some Asian pears setting up in here. Young, but they'll be ready later, later in the season. And another thing that just blowing me away this year is the grapes. The grapes look crazy. It's, it's almost like, to me, it's like one of the, I don't know, it's like a, from a magazine, a picture or something when I stand in here. I stand in here. And I just am thankful for, for the number of grapes in here. It's just insane. I'm gonna try to do my best to prune some of it a little better too, to bring more light. But you can see how much of the leaves I've taken out because I want good light to all these grapes. And I think it's helped a lot. There's just an insane amount. I see a little bit of powdery mildew in spots, so I'm gonna try to get on top of that. But overall, I'm just really happy with the grapes. And it's, it's cool, these are just two grape vines, old, old trees. Another thing I'm excited about is these peaches, holy. The peaches between this plant and the other one, looks like we should have more peaches than we have ever had. And I attribute some of it to the way we've pruned it and how it's so open and gets so much airflow. And even any of the young branches that come and grow in this section, we just rub them off when they're young. And this keeps this open, open area. Right behind me, we've got the other kind of raspberries I was talking about. Here's the yellow raspberries. These ones are seem to be the sweetest raspberries out of all of them. And we just come and grab a bunch of these. So I'll come out and harvest more of them. But again, just a nice garden snack to be out here. Mm. really good other red raspberries I want to show you those too but look at this look at the grapes here it's <laughs> you know these grapes are a number of years old and they've never looked like this so we're excited for the way they look and to bring it to everybody and right here we've got a, another concord grape and this is the grape that we've made jelly out of in the past a number of times these grapes are doing well also as we open up in here and this is the one that's always given me more trouble because of the place we put it. When you plant grapes, you don't want to do what I did here. This was a mistake. You don't want to plant grapes in the middle of a food forest. You want to plant them along the edge, somewhere they're going to get a lot of light, a lot of airflow. But let me bring you back just to show you one more thing. Uh, maybe a couple more things. But this other peach tree, it's got like just as many as the other one. It's funny because going into these videos, I'm always like, I'm going to make this five minutes long. I'm going to make this 10 minutes long. And it's just, there's always too much to show. But these peaches look really, really good. And I'm happy with it. I can see some big harvest in the future, so we're gonna be excited to bring you along for all of them. Potatoes and pawpaw stuff in the back corner, that's not too exciting. But you'll notice these growing in a lot of sections. It's just like everywhere. I almost let it come up like weeds and it does on its own. This is uh, coriander or cilantro. And you can see all the, it was flowers, now they're a little small cilantro. And we purposely allow this to grow in the garden. We want all these cilantro to fall to the ground and continue to flower. Because this style of flower right here, it's the same as the carrot family. It's got this like umbrella shape and these bring in so many pollinators. This is incredible flower for your food forest and for your garden, especially as the understory stuff. Here's the other raspberries here. So the red ones. So again, all different kinds of raspberries, but this isn't my favorite variety of raspberry. My favorite variety of raspberry is the one that's on the side garden. So after I just give you a peek of some of the stuff in the raised beds here and then harvest more carrots, I'll show you my favorite raspberries, the black caps on the side and grab some more blueberries too. Before I grab some more carrots and stuff, I wanted to show you this uh, raised bed, the pallet one. And it looks the best probably section of the whole entire garden. The tomatoes look so healthy. They've got a lot of little tomatoes on them already. We've got a number of different varieties and you'll notice we've got marigolds and things mixed in here. And one of the things that's really cool, if I take you over the top right here, you'll notice it's a completely different flower pattern right in the center. And this is the borage. So look how that's growing alongside it beautifully. And the borage is one of my favorite companions when it comes to flower, uh, tomatoes because it is said to make them taste better. It, things just grow better around it. So it's a great companion and it looks fantastic. They've got these beautiful flowers where they start out like this pinkish and then turn blue. So it's really cool. And then right here, we've got some cucumbers and stuff. We're growing some cucumbers and some watermelons, you'll notice, at the corners of these beds. Then we're just gonna let them trellis along the ground. That looks like Tuck found himself his first cucumber of the year. So you guys would be along for Tuck's first cucumber harvest. 
It's funny because some people, I think, maybe think that I'm like staging a lot of the stuff that Tux does. Not at all. I, I have to try to prevent him from eating a lot of the stuff in the garden because he loves them when they're young like this. But that's because he knows. You want to harvest your cucumbers, your zucchini, your green beans, your peas. Harvest them young, harvest them early, harvest them often. It'll continue your harvests. We want to get the most out of it. So Tux learned from the years and most of the time he'll teach us stuff. So it's always good to be learning from him. After he finishes this cucumber, I'm going to take you over to that side garden and show you some of those black cap raspberries. But actually, actually, let me show you some of the other stuff in the raised bed. Let's take a look real quick while he finishes that. So this raised bed here is when we put in, we showed you guys how we built this. This is, uh, I love this design so much because it's super convenient to sit on. It's really easy to use. You'll notice we've got some lettuces here. I'm going to be harvesting these. And then we've also got the next round of lettuce right next to it. So the same things we're doing in the other section. Some of this kale, this dazzling blue looks great, but we're gonna take some of these carrots out because we wanna harvest these carrots and, and plant a new section of carrots. We're planting 16 per square foot here. So we're just gonna grab a few of them real quick. Some nice ones, a few different colors. Tuck's gonna wanna get his hands on these. So those look nice, but we're gonna harvest this whole section today. And I've got a lot more harvesting to do. I'm just, like I mentioned, that's a double carrot. I'm finding it hard to make the videos uh, shorter if I, if I wanna show a lot of this stuff, but we're gonna be eating a lot of this and the, and the cabbage and there's more and more to get. But I wanna show you the black cap raspberries on the side. Those things are just so good. In the side garden now, and these are the raspberries I've been talking about. These are my favorite ones when it comes to flavor. These are the black cap raspberries. And look at the way they grow, They're this thing's style. Very cool. And they've got this super unique flavor to them. I, I just love them. And I'll give you just a little overview of how many are actually right here. It's insane. I'm gonna jump into the center because I trellised them up this year so I can get into the middle, but they started to grow too vigorously. But, so I can just hang out in the sea of raspberries. You know, it's not bad. You really wanna come out here in the morning because it's a little hot. It's a little hot right now, but come out here in the morning, you know, just chill. Sun hasn't really come up all the way. Nice cool raspberries. It's not too bad. One thing I want to mention to you while I'm here though, all these canes right here, these growing, these are the primicanes. These are the floricanes. Prime, first year. Floricane is the one you're getting to flower on. Primicane is the first year cane. Cut them down about four to six feet. Then they're gonna put out all these side shoots. This is what's gonna be your floricane where you're gonna get all the fruit from. That's what you want. Not till the second year though. So you spend this year pruning and doing the right thing so you get better fruit for next year. We're all about investing in, in next year. That's why perennials are such a foundation in what we do here. So let me bring you over to these blueberries. This is one of the reasons we call it the berry garden because it's berry heaven at this time of year. We've got the blueberries, the raspberries, the goji berries, the gooseberries. And look at this black uh, blueberry plant. Love this one. This must be the same variety as the other early one. So again, don't, don't miss the fact that you gotta plant early, mid and late season of every kind of fruit. And Make sure you're taking advantage of variety selection. That's one of our greatest advantages of, his gar of gardeners. You gotta have a diverse garden. Not only does it do better, not only does it secure the harvest for me and Tuck, but it's a lot more fun. It makes things taste better too. And that's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck get to go around and harvest everything now and we're so thankful for that. And we're thankful for all of you. And we wanna just make sure that you guys stay encouraged because if it's your first year, if it's your second year, just know that everything accumulates. The little things you're doing this year, they're gonna add up to next year, create huge amounts of value. Look at these uh, Cascadia purple snap peas. These are so good. And it's so easy for me to uh, you know, lose my attention when I'm out in the garden because everything's trying to draw me in. The colors, the flowers, uh, it's just too much fun out here. But if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And whenever you're shopping on Amazon, do not forget to start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. It costs you nothing and just gives me and Tuck a little piece. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Tuck and James, we 